Hello folks and welcome back to Skull against the Black Priory. I actually got confused. Last time I saved this as LP8. This isn't LP8, this is LP7. Um, my mistake. Uh, I'm not sure when the confusion happened over here. Yeah, I do not know when, the, when, when that confusion happened. I do not know when this was. The, the patch changed as well. Um, the launch patch. Anyway. We've done everything here. Our only quest at the moment is the Dying Light to find the oil for this, the, the lighthouse in Horin. And rescuing Embla, our main quest. Right. Let's move on then, because what else is here? Is that a cave? That is a cave. Sea caves over there. Ooh. Ooh? Yeah. Worn roads, worn roads, worn roads. Okay, this is definitely a place. Okay, this is the corner, it's the top corner. We have to be here. The winding coastal road constricts as steep cliffs press in from the north. The dense fog reduces visibility to a mere stone's throw, and you feel an uneasiness rise in your stomach. Then, as in response to your concern, a bizarre monstrous growl echoes through the cliffs ahead of you. Frozen mid-step, you can scan the mists, when the unmistaken stench of rotting flesh is wafted towards you. Something large and deadly lies ahead. Roland places his hand on the hilt of his weapon as he scowls into the mist. Keep your wits about you. I fear we may have our work cut out for us. Do you recommend? I say we forge ahead. Let's keep our wits about us. I'm inclined to agree with the big man. Kat adds as she looks on nervously. I agree. Let's go. You swallow hard as you ponder the danger that may lay ahead. Warda is a dangerous place where you can quickly end up facing very dangerous beings. Sometimes the best tactic is to leave a fight for later as you level up and gather more equipment and allies. Remember that you can change the difficulty of the game at any time. You can even create your own custom difficulty. Okay, so you're saying the next fight is probably not one I want to fight. We sneak our way forward, first of all. You carefully pick your way forwards when movement on the top of the cliffs catches your eyes. Robed and hooded figures emerge as they appear to be dragging something towards the edge of the cliff. More of the rabid dogs. Spits rolling, you see the hooded people there. To your horror, you realize that the party is dragging. A naked man and woman, bound and gagged, are struggling desperately as they are mercilessly pushed towards the edge of the cliff. No! Whispers Cat, almost too loud. We have to do something. Look around. One of the cultists shouts and points towards the surf in elation. Utter terror fills the eyes of the moribund couple. You follow their gaze and turn to see, emerging from the surf, a creature of sheer horror. Larger than any sea creature you've fought so far, a hulking shape greedily waddles towards the base of the cliff. Pincers snapping and tentacles squirming greedily. Before you can react further, the cultists hurl the two naked forms from the cliffs. The pair impact the ground below and with a sickening splat. And with surprising speed, the hulking beast falls upon their remains. Standing transfixed, you watch as the horror consumes the remains of the unfortunate wretches. Sickening snaps and wet pops fill the air as the creature feeds. All the while, the robed cultist stands swaying and chanting on the ledge above. So stealth 16. Attempt to sneak away or sink to your knees and join in the worship. Can we flee? A 10 or above in 2d6. Welp, that was my choice. I wish I could know what the pluses were before we make the choice. I knew I knew for a fact that this was going to be fast, but I don't want to join in worship. This is stupid. Cat, please? Ah, oh, you roll a 10. Cat, you legend. You don't dare to breathe to slowly come back your way back the way you came. As soon as you feel certain that you're out of sight, panic takes over and you run as fast as you can. By the time you stop, you're utterly exhausted, but at least you're still alive. You leveled up to level 7. What are you now? You are currently... You were nothing. But now you, you were exhausted, possibly, but now you're nothing. Uh, feats. Three more feats for you. What's up this? This is bow damage, rapid reload, it's fine. Uh, pierce armor. Pierce size strike. Hamstrings, a backstab initiate. Backstab expert increases backstab in vein strike, causes bleeding. Crippling finesse. When scoring a backstab with a light weapon, causes a message to increase backstab damage. Just keep the backstab going. Do you want some more light weapon use, I think? Light weapon use, increased stuff dodge, increased will and crit resistance, and weaving blade. Dodging a melee attack causes you to deal a small amount of slashing damage to your attacker. Countering. Crit resistance, survivor initiate, or you can get increased trade craft for movement as well. Or four ranks increased stealth. This is not one, two. 
three. This is three, one, two. Interesting. That's the only thing I've seen with a different spread. Um... Evasive. Disengaging from melee does not cause your turn to end. Okay, that's useful. Fancy footwork. Swapping places does not cause your turn to end. Dash. Target yourself. You gain lesser haste. For free. Okay, so evasive is not bad either. It just lets you get out of work. It lets you get out of dodge. Okay. Save an exit for you. Okay. Right, we, have a, we have a small village here. A refugee camp, at least. Before you, the unmistakable mess. The squalor and desperation of a refugee camp sprawls around us, falls farmed like a festering wound. Get to the exit here, the edge of the map, and explore. Police car outside? Nope. Yeah, police. That's, that's, that's the noise the police makes. Let's go around the farmhouse and see what we can find, first of all. Sunmouths. Star spawn. We're doing, the, we're doing the edge of the map first. The full edge. We're doing the full edge of the map first. Some items. Penny buns. Some items. Some items. Whatever this is, it always comes as some items. Interestingly, it's never just whatever it is. It's always just some items. So I wonder what it is. Legionnaires rest, possibly, but it's Legionnaires and something else. I think that's Legionnaires rest. We have 13 of those, and it's used for the rest of lesser vitality tonics, so it's useful. I don't know what that is. Okay, anyway. Uh, up here. Back to the beginning. Ooh, I thought that was the edge of the map. It was not. Ooh, to the last. Some, perhaps. Um, who's first? Roland and Cat. Good equipped cat. Uh, poor arrows still. 25 of those. Okay, well. Send that through. Ow. Beanie. Uh, so, uh, char so it charges its own thing, that's why. Because now attacks, I can attack double. But it charges its own thing. You're panicked. Backstab damage on you, nice. Um. Oh, because the thrust and parry is the whole turn and charges with the whole turn as well. Got high soap. Lovely, lovely. Slash there. And slash again. That was a big hit. Roland. Would you kindly? Backstab down on you because you're flanked. Inspired to kill. Roland. There. Oh, you got an arrow back, Claw. Okay, so just clearing out all the. Things we found in the water. Could all be there could be things in the water. Can we see what's. Nope, there's nothing in the water. Okay, so I think we've, we've done, the, we've done the, the roundabout the outside of this place. There's the Bane of the refugee camp. Hello, you. A lot of graves over there. Quick, ready. Make ready. Snakes? Giant snakes. It is snakes, in fact. So two giant snakes over there. You have a... What's your, what's your movement range? 
four and one. So one, two, three, four, and then attack. Okay, so let's move back a little bit. Cat as well. Huh. Turns out you do have the range for that. Um, cat delay. Um, just wait. That could come to us. Uh, trust and parry, please. And nothing too complicated there. How much? 271, that's nothing, yeah. Uh, some scales, some venom glands. Some carrots? Tomatoes. We're slowly looting everything we can get out of this place. Possibly a mistake, or we might be causing irreparable damage to the recipe for regeneration potion. Wrong one. Six, there you go. Just wrong one. Uh, regeneration potion. Regeneration rest, glow men, and rot crawlers. We have rot crawlers? King's Insect, Fell Bell, Fire and Insect. Rot Crawlers. We have three Rot Crawlers. Okay, so we can make some of those potions. I need... Before, the thing is, before I want to make motions, I want someone with intelligence on the team to get guaranteed a bunch of crafting stuff. Laughter, Cap, Sorrow Eaters, Sun Mouth. Okay, so now there's the, there's the, there's the, the bunch of graves here. So you. you approach a man sweating profusely in caked in dirt. He's hunched over and panting, seemingly winded from the hard work of digging graves. Who goes there? The man jolts to hefting and shovels the weapon. I'm not looking for trouble. Why so jumpy? Why so jumpy, he asks. Well, since you ask, I drew the short straw and it's fallen upon my wretched shoulders to carry the dead, to bury the dead. He looks around nervously. And if I don't get back to it, I'll be food for the fell hounds before you know it. Fell hounds? Haven't you seen them? Bloody monsters roam the hills in packs. I ain't never seen hounds like these before. Hulking and diseased looking. Come at night, they do. They get the graves I dig and eat the dead right out of their very graves. In the distance, a howl sounds and the man straightens up like some prey animal sensing a predator. He briefly squints into the professional twilight that covers the island before grabbing his shovel and redoubling his efforts towards finishing his work. Run back to camp. I'll finish the job. The man looks at you with slight confusion and pushes his shovel into your hands. He then thanks you profusely and runs back to camp. Get to work. There are two corpses wrapped in linen before you. Their graves have been dug, but they still need to be filled in. Look at the corpses. The corpses are a man and a woman. Perhaps they were once a man and wife. They look well fed and there is no apparent cause of death. Investigate the corpses more closely. Roll a six or above. Seven. Yeah. As you look the corpses over, you notice their abdomens seem distended beyond that of simple corpse gas. You apprehensively poke at the swelling, and to your horror, the mass begins to swarm and shift. Ugh. Unpleasant. Hastily bury the corpses or hope no open things. Cut open the corpses. We're still very curious. We haven't l yet lost our curiosity. With trembling hands, you cut into the pallid flesh and expose the entrails of the corpse, just as you are about to abandon your grisly task when the entrails whip out of the wound in massive, squirming, eyeless worms. Panicked, you frantically scuttle away from the tiny, snapping orifices when Orlin's charges pass with you with a shovel raised. The shovel makes short work of the tiny terrors until both corpse and monster reduce to a pulpy mass. Ashen faced from horror, you push the broken corpses into their graves and quickly begin piling dirt onto them. You wipe the grime from your face as you finish the grim task. Sadly, you suspect these are far from the last graves that will be made for the poor refugees in Horrid before this is over. The darkness of the night is prepared and around you. As you prepare to leave, you notice movement just past the edge of the darkness. Before you manage to call out, slavering horrors charge at you. The dogs, the fell, the fell hounds are here. Who's the first fell hound to move? You are. And cat. Cat, get here. You can hopefully get behind there, maybe. Emo. Good hit. Inspired attack on you. Um.
Missed. Hold on. You panicked? I think we might be panicked. You're panicked, okay. Oh, you weren't panicked, damn it. You weren't panicked. Back snap damage on you. Lovely. Lovely jubbly. You still panicked? Your panics have ended. Move over here, please. Good. Inspired panicked. Back snap damage on you. Lovely. XP for us. Arrow back. So we just examine all the graves, shall we? Let's examine all the graves real fast in case there's anything. Is there, is there a unique grave here? I don't think so. I think it's all, it's all the standard graves. Also, I just realized that's unamarked. Not unmarked, it's unmarked, amarked. These ones are specific because they're the ones you just grave. Like, everything else is unamarked grave. Okay, anyway, you, you did this bit. Laughter cap over here. There's the top farm over here. We haven't locked through this yet. So, some pumpkins. David S. He's his own thing. And the skeletons are part of it. You could have snuck, oh, snuck in. You could have gone in there. We can come to the front. There are guards. I think we have explored everything other than the actual place I should be exploring. Go up here. Those doors are closed. Okay, these are the guards over here. This is the front door. So can, we, can you walk in the front? You can walk in the front? Yes, we can. Okay. Entering the ragged camp, you notice a small crowd nearby, arranged in an inward-looking ring. In the center stands a formidable armored woman. She carries an unmistakable air of authority, and the insignia on her armor marks her as a cleric of the Order of Sepulch Sepulchites, an imperial religious order tasked with caring for the dead. The tattered band of refugees surrounding her are agitated and shouting over one another. But there are so few of us! Horn was home to 200 and we're but a few score left, cries a ragged man with tears in his eyes. By the golden corpses, there must be survivors! beseeches another. And who are we to send? Half of us won't live through the next market day, and the other half aren't fate to hold as much as a stick. Old crone interjects, panic quivering in her voice. The crowd erupts in a cacophony of desperate appeals. The cleric raises her arms and the crowd falls silent. Her sonorous voice rings out. We may indeed be cursed, but Aldon is right. There may yet be survivors in Horrid, and it's my duty to go to their aid. Or, at least, to learn what fate befell them. The assembly erupts again, some blessing the cleric in tears of hope, others clinging to their robes while pleading for her to not risk her life. Double R over there. Through the crowd, the woman catches sight of you and nods curtly. She turns away and begins to load up on supplies, no doubt intent on making good on her prophets to dependent refugees. So we will have a word with you, because you you have a voice. You're clearly a party member. Um, Anything over here? Hello, little child. The child is ragged and muddy and crying Big, great sobs. Great big sobs. As you approach, she wipes her nose and looks up at you, her eyes widening somewhat at such a Roland. Hmm. I'd prefer we just got on with our work. Roland grunts. What's wrong? I can't find Frogart. I just had him and I was playing and now he's gone and I can't all alone somewhere. Who's Frogart? Frogart, small and green and fluffy. He's my best friend and I've lost him. The girl looks truly heartbroken. I'll have a look. Hurry. He doesn't like to be alone. He's afraid of the hounds. Okay, there's this stuff around here. Let's have a look around. Um, okay, there's people in shops, and looks like this is a interesting place. Uh, let's talk to the cleric first of all, shall we? The imposing cleric holds up a palm in greeting. Welcome to our new home, stranger. The people of this island know me as Drina. I serve the golden dead in this camp. These people are under my protection. What brings you here? A terror from the deep claimed our ship. You speak of the Leviathan. The fisherman first saw it about a week before the fall of Horrid. I do not know what black depths spawned it, but the natural order of things is fast becoming undone. Tell me, why did you come to this accursed island? I was bound for Horin. 
Juna nods and smiles to a passing refugee before leaning in close to you and asking with a low voice, And what business did you have in Horin? I was looking for someone. Here in Idra, that may prove to be a difficult task given the tempest that engulfed this island. How so? She leans back, her eyes still flinty. Are you not aware of the situation here? These people say the island is surely doomed. Her eyes bore into you, gauging your reaction. Is that how you spell gauging? It's a moment. Is that how you spell gauging? Hang on. It is, it is how you spell gauging. Gouging is with an O. Even though it sounds weird. And what has happened? Our graveyards have been overflowing as of late with stranger killing stranger for no good reason. And worse, I think, brother and brother, husband and wife. It's become a tide of ruin. I implored the governor to intervene and investigate, but as usual he did nothing but cower in his villa and peer over his walls. The governor? A drunken buffoon in my estimation. He did not deserve to die, however, and I don't think he made it out of Horin. Marcus, his chamberlain, did, however. I suppose he's the closest we're, we, the closest we're to a leader at the moment, though he may wish it were not so. I see what happened next. Then a few nights ago, pandemonium erupted. Bands of armed men and women roamed the town, hacking down anyone they came across. Some folks claim those that did not die in the spot were dragged away, to suffer some unknown fate. I order and I joined what same guardsmen remained in the chaos and tried to stem the tide, but we were driven from the city in a panicked exodus that followed. We considered retaking the town, but we have had scored of wounded, so we retreated, better to save the lives not yet lost. We set up this camp to regroup and care for the wounded, but a shadow hangs over us. The wounded do not recover, and those still on their feet slowly lose their mind, or hearts. What do you intend to do now? We need answers. We need just as the refugees languishing in the camp before continuing, and it's my duty to seek them out if they exist. I must venture to find a way back into Horan, and then somewhere darker, I fear. Failing that, the situation here in camp is getting untenable. Anything that can be done to improve it will be a small victory. Are you planning to go alone? If I must. Doomed or not, it's all dust in the end, and I intend to die in armor. But from what I can tell, we must both tread the same terrible path. Though our reasons may differ, surely there is safety to be had in numbers. Indeed, let's join forces. Excellent. Juno's face lights for an instant. These people, my people, I feel their pain, and we will mourn together later. For now, they deserve answers, and by the Emperor's bones I will get them some. I have some questions first. Juno looks expectantly at you, one brow arched. Who do you think attacked Horin? The Reavers came from the inside the town. I recognized some of them as sailors, fishermen and whalers, locals, mostly from old Idrin families. Perhaps they belong to one of the lodges. Lodges? Yes, there are several long traditions on Idra for the fishermen and sailors to band together in fellowships known as lodges. From what I understand, they serve mainly as combines for fair distribution of the day's catch. But there are some persistent rumors of them serving other purposes too. Rumors? Our order is an imperial one. The locals would be loath to discuss such things with us. But I've always suspected they practice pre-imperial customs of ocean worship, including offerings to ensure safe travel and bountiful catches. Juno looks expectantly at you. What about Embla? Juna fidgets with a heavy-looking ring on her finger while she listens to you dis your description of Embla. She's certainly not in the camp, and I can't say I remember seeing her in Horin, but perhaps that bodes well for your quest. How so? One of the primary tasks of my order is to care for the dead, and I can say with certainty that I didn't lay to rest anyone matching her description before the fall of Horin. Do you have any suggestions of where to look? Beyond traveling to Horin, you may want to ask around here at the camp. A few of the sur merchants survived. Perhaps she visited one during her stay? I see. I had some other questions. It's a lie, I don't. It's time to go. Before we leave, we should seek out Marcus, our leader of sorts. He's holed up in the stable trying to organize this mess of camp. Holy ashes, no one tries harder than him, but the task at hand is monumental, and he needs help. This should be in red commas, because this is her speaking. Anyway. Updated journal. Drina, the Silplock Rite. Uh, J. Find Frogart. So the grave digger, I met a poor fellow outside the Idrin refugee camp. He, not ha, he had the thankless task of burying dead refugees. I offered to help him before the horrid entities in that room the island made short work of him. Needless to say, he didn't think twice. I was joined by a sepulchre cleric by the name of Drina. She intends to search for a way into the city of Horin, which has been apparently been overrun by cultists. Before we make the, leave the camp, she insists we make a stop by the Dickens, the Cacto leader. Someone named Marcus is holed up in a stable nearby. All right. Drina, let's level you up. 
plus 24 attunement, vitality, plus 18 attunement. You actually are. So you see this. You are. Attributes, you are. You have presence. What are you? You know what? Wait, what are you? You're a hospitaller. So you're a, you're a default cleric. You are a combat cleric. Armor and healing. So you have presence, which is your charisma, which means you have. Let's, let's, let's compare you with anything else. You have athletics zero, awareness three. So you're not. You, you have crafting on par with cat. Your diplomacy is nowhere near as good as mine. Your healing is as good as mine. You've got the most lore out of anyone here, but it's not much. Stats-wise, skills-wise, you're not really doing anything at the moment. You may that may change with you get skills into healing or something because you have a lot of points to spend. Your inventory is currently a mace, a breastplate, a shield, and a tabard. You can't. You have to use uh, plunky things. You can't use blades or axes. You have to use maces. That's fine. There's nothing else we have here. We'll give you a lantern as well because sure, why not? Um, your your spells. Nothing yet. You have magical aptitude of 3, and your attunement of 38, which is your MP. It's 5 from your abilities. From your abilities. I'm trying to, see, I'm trying to parse the, the, the breakdown here. Your presence gives you 12. Your presence is currently 3, so that's 4 times your presence. Your level's 21, your level's 21 7, so 3 times your level. Not sure what your abilities are. Anyway, abilities increase attunement, increase diplomacy, increase healing. So there, yeah, so there you go. That's your your abilities. You have an ability that gives you increased attunement. Anyway, your feats. Hi, your feats. You have religious training it gives you imperial imperial litany. You gives you fortified will until the end of combat. You you pray and removes fearful and panicked. Then gives you have divine spell casting gives you activate spell casting. You can begin studying schools of spell casting, learn spells, pick up and invest in one or more such schools. Then you can have cleric weapon that gives you seal training, phalanx, and defend ally. The resilience initiate and faithful initiate increased healing, increased attunement, and spell aura radius increase. Resilience expert, faithful expert, medium armor expert, heavy armor expert, and faithful master. Okay, I'll give you that because you need that anyway. Then uh, your divine spellcasting, boom. Body magic initiate, body magic expert, body magic master, body magic grandmaster. So you have body magic focus, and you learn two new spells from the body magic school. So three here, it gives you body magic school plus one, and it gives you two from the body magic school. It gives you bear's strength, lasts for cascade to value 12. Uh, Targets any ally adjacent to cash gives you fortified strength until the end of combat. Uh, cure water poison, removes potters and meat poison. Minor lay on hands, heals. Your magical aptitude is 3, I think. It's 8 to 13 healing. And Seraph Serpent's Grace increases fortified agility by 2 to the end of combat. Then tier 2, cure moderate disease. Moderately diseased and weakly diseased and nauseous. Fleet of foot gives you lesser haste. Until the end of combat, then the end of turn, sorry. Uh, moderately on hands. And less regeneration. Until the end of combat, you get to regeneration. And pestilence. Adds all enemies, get severely. The miasma gives you disrupted and strong poison to all opponents. And then you have circle of healing. Targets all allies in the area. The auras, they, they, there's a lot of auras here that get affected by that. And then brittle hands, greater restoration, corporeal restoration, and that raised from the dead. Now let's basically heal a bunch of stuff and regenerate stuff. Okay, fine. Then you have... You cast tier 2 spells of body, tier 3, tier 4 spells of body school. Then you have mind magic. Gives you aura of fear. Uh, gives enemies fearful and disrupted. Uh, clear senses. Removes blindness, deafness, and silence to allies. Fortify Awareness, increases Awareness Initiative. Fortified Will, yep. Instill Courage, removes as inspired. And Sublime Projection, targets any opponent and does damage. Sublime Damage. Uh, plus Magical Aptitude, so that's going to be your three. So it's going to be five to, nine, five to eight damage there. 
Then your tier two spells of that tree are Searing Light, Aura Damage, Heal Mind, Holy Lance, not blunt magical sublime damage, but not plus plus um, magical thing, but stunning touch. Touch of confusion, and you don't get to learn three or four, so I'm not going to bother checking those. And then you have spirit magic, which is blessing touch, adds blessed, which is plus one dodge, melee range to hit, toughness until the end of combat, useful. Mark of heroism, adds heroic inspiration, until the end of combat, plus two melee damage. Hammer of light, just bashes something in AoE melee around you. Holy light, illuminated and inspired. And Touch of Condemnation, adds Condemned. Okay, then level 2 for those you can you can learn Heroic Aura, Aura of Condemnation, Aura of Silence, Blessing Aura, or Touch of Weakness. Then you have Cleric Weapons Initiative, Shield Training, Phalanx, Defend, Ally, Club Accuracy, Club Damage, Stunning Blow. Um, Phalanx again, Shield Training, Shield Rush. Then Club Accuracy, Shake the Earth. Okay, we'll work on we'll work on getting get some getting some healing done there for you. You get to learn healing, good. Um, and blessing might be useful as well. Uh, okay, so we got that. Also, we're going to go for increased healing and increased attunement. Spell aura radius increase as well, possibly. Yes. Cleric phalanx over there. Club accuracy over there. Seven more points to spend. Seven more points to spend. What does that mean here? We can get increased vitality there. Three more, six more points to spend. It was this mind magic initiate, and gives you two phalanx. It gives you phalanx, phalanx, and some shield damage there. Save an exit, please. Thank you. Pick two new spell, spirit magic wells to level one. Um, you're learning Blessing Touch and Mark of Heroism. Two Minds magic spell schools. Oh, hmm. Yes. Possibly not the Mind magic, because I got confused here. Instill Courage, Fortify Will, Fortify Awareness. This is until the end of combat, isn't it? Yeah, so this gives, that just gives increased awareness in, until the end of combat. Or of fear is not too shabby either, actually. Put my projection in case you find something this week, and we go, we go for uh, bear strength and minor lay on hands. Cool. There you go. You're now in the party. And next time, folks, we will explore and see if we can. I have done because like, I can go back and save and reload and etc. Et I should have probably saved before coming into camp. Don't particularly care about coming here. Like not really. Probably I couldn't. I could have avoided coming with the mind stuff and gone like heavy into body and stuff like that. But those three points probably would have been more interesting to use. Working up the way to getting more things like you know, lesser regeneration, possibly moderately on hands, maybe. Hmm. Oh well, we shall live and we shall learn. You got some spells here. Anyway, folks, I'll catch you all next time. See you then. Bye bye.